Welcome to the debut episode of Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me, as always, because he's been here for every single episode, Cole Monroe. How's it going, Cole? It's going good. How are you, sir? Do you like how I just changed my my enthusiasm level immediately as soon as we started the show? <laughs> yeah. You're kind of down in the dumps sounding. I know you're, you're, you're probably not, but that's the way you sounded. And then... Hey, <laughs> I that's my when I'm l- multitasking, I sound really somber versus yeah. trying to host a show and get people involved. But uh, this is an interactive show, um, a, a, a new show format for HorribleNight.com, just basically getting caught up on the gaming news of the week and what we've been playing. And uh, also trying to see what our live audience uh, has been playing and what they've had, what has had their attention in the industry. So... Um, you can submit your answers before the show on our Facebook page and, uh, also, uh, give us, give us a shout in chat, uh, if you're joining the show and, or leave us some comments if you're watching afterwards. But, uh, let's get rolling with just, uh, what were you up to this weekend, Cole? Um, Saturday I had an exciting day of waiting for a delivery of a new bed. As you can see, my old bed behind me here. Oh. Uh, this is now the guest bed. Okay. But... So you're not in the bedroom. Your office is no, I'm in, I'm in my man cave slash office slash guest bedroom. Um, but there's a ton of crap in here right now, so we couldn't set the bed up. <laughs> um, so that was exciting. And we got one of those nice like memory foam beds. And Ooh. wow, what a difference that makes. Changed your life. Um, and then yesterday, I started wading into the stream. I tried to set up stream account on Twitch, or I successfully set up a stream account on Twitch. Took me a second, uh, and I knew what you were doing. You are talking about live streaming. <laughs> live streaming, yeah. It's Not it's, waiting. In, there's no streams like in Las Vegas. Lived, lived in a yeah. desert. <laughs> there's no streams here. Concrete River sometimes, but um, yeah, waiting into the live streaming business, so that was pretty cool. Um, there's some challenges for sure with OBS, but I think I'll figure it out, and um, you know, you'll see me online on my channel, and then someday on my Horrible Night channel, and yeah, once get you my get, license. Once you run through our rigorous uh, QA process yeah. and get approved, <laughs> but it'll 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 take a while. We run a pretty tight ship here; um, no technical problems tolerated, um, and it, it's. Uh, good luck is really yeah so yeah uh, so all of us on horrible night we use open broadcast software um obsproject.com um and was there anything in particular that i don't know that you found easier than expected and maybe what's your kind of biggest hang up at the moment well my biggest hang up for a while was a echoing mic um (laughs) i couldn't quite figure that out um but then I changed some settings, and that seemed to work out. And now I was just watching a playback of some game capture footage that I did locally. And for some reason, it's the viewpoint is shifted off to the left mm. or the right. So, like, I was playing Tomb Raider, and you can barely see Lara and some of the when she's shooting. Uh, so i got to figure that out. I don't know what the heck's going on with that. But everything else seems okay. Mm. I mean, it's for... I guess something that always seemed really complicated and yeah. something I would never do, it's not that hard to set up. I was, you know, we, we've all been kind of surprised. It's a matter of just, there's enough tutorials out there that if anybody wants to do it, it's, I think it's more a matter of, do you have the computer and the uh, internet connection to handle it? So, uh, yeah. Let's take and a now that, like, processor. With, right. And now with the open. The OBS, like it's free instead of buying XSplit or something else, so it's a little more attainable for a lot more people. Mm-hmm. How was your weekend? What did you do, sir? I was catching up on some some television shows um, that I don't know how I feel about the new season of Breaking Bad or Mad Men. So they what? So in Breaking Bad, they did the half season, and they're coming back for another half season. And Mad Men just seems to keep on going. But I'm actually really enjoying both seasons for what they are. And I I can't tell if I'm just making excuses for the shows or not. But sometimes you got to 
I would also put the latest season of Supernatural in that list of shows that probably should have ended by now. Um, but I'm still enjoying them, but I feel kind of funny talking to people about them now because you know yeah. the the best is behind you in all of these shows. And uh, so it's kind of weird. You kind of feel like you're wasting your time, but at the same same time... I don't know. I still I still enjoy the shows for what they are, and you know yeah. it's better than a lot of the other stuff. But let's move on to our game of the week. Um, uh, what what's your game of the week? I don't know. Let me check. I think um, it's something we play together. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Warframe was mm-hmm. my game of the week. A free to play third person co op online shooter thing. <laughs> Shooter and sword stabbier. That's a new genre I just made up. Short sword, sword sword stabbier. Gotcha. Uh, man, like all these free to play games are really freaking good <laughs> and fun. Like I didn't understand what I was missing before I became a PC owner, and uh, I'm just glad that I'm, you know now able to play these. But Warframe. I didn't know what you'd think of this one. I'm... Uh, <laughs> You're I'm still terrible. deciding? <laughs> no, 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 I like it. I like it. I'm, in fact, I think we should play it tonight, probably. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe play it aside. But, um... I really like the... small, or quick missions. Like, okay. They, they, you know what, they take, what, under a half an hour, I think, for each mission. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And maybe under 20 minutes, even. Um, and I, I really like that. It doesn't feel like it's that... It never gets stale, I guess, um, for me. Um, and I, maybe that's because we didn't repeat any of the missions. Um, but I know that's something that you have to do in that game to kind of level up. Yeah, there's a bit of grinding involved. Um, so I dove heavy into the game uh, last week, as before you and I played. Coop and I were playing, and because I wanted, to, I hadn't got into the level of understanding how the inventory and the mods and the skills actually worked and how they leveled up. Um, so we found, first of all, do not play this game alone. It's kind of boring alone. Uh, it's a much better with friends, and we've also found like the bigger groups you can start to. Uh, go through the, some of the more difficult levels. I think if you only have one or two of you, you are going to have to repeat um, mission t- missions um, because you want to. Everything levels up in this game. Your your weapons, your your warframe, which is whatever your your suit is, and that comes with powers and um, and then you're earning credits and all. You can use those to up, buy upgrades and get modifications and upgrade those modifications and all that. Um, but uh, the the actual core gameplay, I don't know something about the combination of the guns feel great, but just that any time you can swoop in and cut somebody up with your sword, it just as a nice change of pace, and it's just really satisfying and really fast. Because we, um, as I kind of got the hang of things a little bit more, I started doing more like your Warframe is actually really agile, and you can like just flip and slide and 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 run up walls and it's just really fast paced, really fun to play and really different. And, um, yeah, it is very different. And then, um, I think after we got like three or four people in there, we were able to take on some of the, the larger missions that think the challenge started ramping up, um, by about mission five. And, uh, you also start seeing different enemy types and we actually got an outdoor environment. Uh, one thing that does help the replayability in, in the game though, is that all the levels are randomly generated. Um, so every, even when you do replay a mission, it's in roughly the same area, but they've kind of, they change the layout of each of the levels just enough that it feels a little bit fresh. Um, but yeah, that game really surprised me. Yeah. And I, I really like enjoy the, uh, the, like the power ups that you get, um, the mods that you can put on your Warframe. And I think that's, I think that's definitely like something that can make it worth the grind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like the grind is you know, just worthless. It actually feels like you're gaining something when you do it. And then you can buy sweet things like the bow, like you did. (laughs) Yeah. So I bought, I bought my second, um, free to play item ever. Um, because I don't know how I actually got the in game space bucks, the actual money. Um, 
but I had some, and it was really close to buying a new weapon, and so we bought a bought a bow that was very, very overpowered, and not only does the bow do a lot of damage, but it also harpoons things to walls and makes them stick there, and the ragdoll physics is always entertaining. So um, that, that bow, the Paris bow, pretty awesome. There's some pretty awesome um, melee weapons in there as well, like... Uh, there's there, there's a bow in there that we didn't unlock. A, the the glaive for anybody that uh, played Dark Sector, which is from the same developers, um, we kind of got a kick out of that. And uh, but yeah, free to play. Uh, if you've got a small group of people, I think it's a nice change of pace from um, other co-op games or other like we've been playing a lot of Planet Side recently. But just going the more of the smaller focus scale and just. You know, grouping together for for missions is it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, my game of the week actually is uh, Echo the Dolphin <laughs> because oh so Coop Coop and I Coop has a um, a four year old daughter and I and my girlfriend that I live with has a four year old daughter and we we always talk about the games that we're introducing them to and um, we were chatting at work the other day and I noticed that he had bought a bunch of Sonic games and a bunch of the Sega Genesis collection. And I kind of made fun of them just from the, wow, yeah, today seems like a great day to buy those games. That's like one of the most random things I've ever heard of. Uh, then he told me he was going to play it with his daughter, and I started thinking about that and uh, made a lot of sense. So um, I found myself the same, the same evening um, where I had made fun of him hours earlier just buying the entire Genesis collection. And um, so Lily and I were playing. Uh, what did you get it on? What's that? I got what this on. Get it on? I got it, got it on Steam. So oh, okay. Like, there's fifty two. There's five uh, packs with fifty two games total. So. Oh wow. And then I also bought a couple of the stray Sonic games. So I was, and I think you were the same way, Cole. Mm-hmm. I I grew up with the Super Nintendo. I played yeah. very limited Genesis uh, games. Just friends of friends, basically. Um, as it seemed like all my friends were Super Nintendo players. So Echo the Dolphin, I never really put much time into it. Um, but the cool part about it was that Lily was able to pick it, pick it up and play it really easily because she just wanted to swim around as the dolphin. And <laughs> uh, she's just she's still learning how to use controllers as far as... She's used to touchscreen devices, but um, as far as using a, a controller or a D-pad, a D-pad or an analog stick at the same time as using face buttons, that's still a little bit foreign to her, but this, she, she was able to get it with this game. So, um, that's cool. so we were swimming around and, you know, I was just kind of letting her do her thing. And then, you know, she was pretty happy there for 10, 15 minutes. And then, um, she wanted to move on to the next stage. And, uh, so I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get to the next stage. And I grabbed the controller and then I thought back and I did not remember how to actually get the game started in Echo the Dolphin because it was it was one of those things where you have to you know talk to the other dolphins and they give you kind of clues of about your abilities and what you can do and I had you know I I knew it had something to do with jumping into the sky but and I thought I was doing that and then I saw this other like this other exit that I thought maybe I could break through and I was spending time trying to do that. And she was in the meantime, getting really frustrated with me. <laughs> so I felt really incompetent and had end up having to look it up that you had to, uh, you know, build up. I was building up speed in the wrong way to jump high enough to trigger the, the event. So, um, uh, but once we got through that, that's pretty hilarious. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I actually had to give the controller back to her and I don't know how, how do you, I don't know how you explain to a four year old that you have to look something up on game facts but um i said i'm gonna i forget what i said something about the internet but i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out how to do this and uh so that that was not a uh a mass that was not a a good good gaming moment for me but it's still funny and we we played for another half hour or so and she still asks to play asks to play the dolphin game yeah, that's um, cool. very cool some games of the week from chat verdian is always immersed in dota 2 uh, but uh, points out that the International 3, their Valve's tournament for, for this game is just about to start. And uh, the teams got that were invited were announced, and uh, the qualifiers uh, were, were going on. So that whole eSports side of Dota 2, um, if you haven't gotten the chance to see kind of the tools that Valve has built up around it, it's pretty, 
pretty impressive. Uh, JPT is playing a game called Timber and Stone at timberandstonegame.com. They just updated to version 1.2, and something about the inclusion of wall sconces makes him very happy. I do not know what Timber and Stone is, oh, but it is it? sounds like a Minecrafty type of thing, maybe? I'm guessing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, Map Compass that. Key is also our resident Planet Side 2 player. Last, I think we introduced him to the game, and last I saw, he's, his battle rank um, was higher than our entire squads combined. So, uh, <laughs> But Planet Side 2, always, always a favorite. Um, as far as HorribleNight.com highlights, uh, what stood out to you? Uh, we had the first... 50 night moves highlights compiled into one <laughs> long clip ship, uh, which I was very entertained by. You know, you basically took uh, took a clip of each highlight that you've posted on the site and kind of strung them together in no particular order or fashion and uh, said, here, watch this. And I did. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I thought it was really cool. It was a really good, like... Uh, it was a hell of a promo. Thanks. Yeah, man. you like that real monotone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed it because it, it kind of like gave me an idea of some of the games that I've even missed. You know, watching you guys play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's it's a good it's a good introduction to the site in terms of our streaming uh, capabilities and lack thereof. And uh, I don't know, just kind of gives us a, gives people an idea of what to expect. And expect really bad screaming and yelling and it's a lot of screaming, a lot of cursing, really, really bad, uh, a lot of failures. Video. Yeah, really bad playing a video game. So that's a, that's the biggest Good thing I've, I've learned since we started streaming is just how terrible we are at video games. But I think we also have more fun than anybody. So that's hopefully, true. Hopefully that comes across. But, but yeah, we were. I was posting a couple highlights last week and just kind of realized we'd crossed that threshold. And I was like. I wonder if we can't make a little compilation video out of this. And it came to better, came together better than I thought. Um, so, if you're a fan of the site at all, recommend checking that out or uh, help us uh, promote our live streams and share it with a friend. We'd appreciate it. Um, I'll give a little quick little shout out to Ethan's editorial last week. Yes, we still actually do a, a couple editorials a week now. Um, we kind of founded the site around our, our creative writing, but um, it's kind of gone. Taking a little bit of a backseat to the video work and podcasts lately, but Ethan and I still try to um, knock out one of the one or two of these a week. And uh, he actually picked up some legendary weaponry uh, <laughs> in real life and was just trying trying to compare it to all of the loot lust games that he has. And um, he <laughs> he decided while you know having like a legendary eagle knife is pretty cool, he shouldn't actually be trusted with it. So. Um, on the other, on one hand, he should probably stick with the games, but on the other, he said it kind of lessened um, the loot lust in video games because once you have something for real, it, it kind of trumps all that stuff. So I thought that was kind of a a random Ethan take on something I never thought of before. And yes, right. don't, do not give him knives. I don't know who sold that to don't him. Don't give him anything. <laughs> I don't. He'll find a way to hurt somebody with something. All right, the next thing that we like to do weekly is uh, go through your what you'd like to change in this week in gaming and then our uh, best of the week in gaming. So we'll start off with the thing you'd want to change, Cole. Oh, Nintendo. <laughs> Everything? Because that's where I'm at. I mean, like, you take a step forward and then, like, 20 steps back and then a step forward and then 40 steps back. And then you're out of the business altogether. Like, this whole putting ads on gameplay videos on YouTube is the latest drama surrounding Nintendo. And it's just asinine. <laughs> um, it, it was, it's so late to the game in as far as copyright battles in YouTube anyway. Like, why, why is. now? These let's Why play now? let's play videos have been around for years and so they just want a piece of that pie for some reason and they're saying they're doing us a favor because they really should take the videos down and it's just such a I don't know such a um, what's the word uh, just 
a, a, a terrible way heavy, to look at it. Heavy handed, like Neanderthal. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, like um, Cliff or bullshit. Wisinski, we'll take bullshit too. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Cliff Wozinski had tweeted that he had basically fought this with Epic right before he left and got them to say, "Okay, we're not going to do that. They're not going to go after so, him." Not not going to go after their videos. They're not going to post their own ads on top of the videos. So I think it's just I don't know. It's just it's silly. I mean, you're, yeah. Like I understand. I guess like people getting ad revenue from your copyrights, but at the same time, it's like it's adding. I don't know. It's it's free advertisement for your games. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So. It's- <laughs> Whoa, I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah. I think the Xenomorphs uh, have broken in. <laughs> so, the, uh, yeah, I know that dog is going crazy. Uh, <laughs> he hates Nintendo, too. So. <laughs> I I don't know. It just I'm it was worried. really disappointing because I'm trying to get, I mean, you and I are Wii U owners. We've, we're 3DS owners. We've gotten amped up for Nintendo a lot in the last year, and we just keep looking for these, you know, these, these all of branches to hold on to like a reason to like think they're going to get back in touch. And then this, this is like the most disconnected I've seen them in a while combined with the fact of nervous about their E3 presence, the fact that they're not going to do their traditional conference and how the Wii U stacks up this year. And then they follow that up with, uh, um, uh, one of their Nintendo direct videos. And I just, you know, Sonic headline, the damn thing. It was, Sonic and old school Zelda games that yes I want to play but it's just what are I don't know I don't know who they're trying to reach at this point it just they look they come across like they're grasping for straws. Oh, well, in their defense for their Nintendo directs they do them all the time. Yes. they're not gonna have they're not gonna have they're gonna be gangbusters be all the time every time yeah so like and I and I actually really enjoy the Nintendo directs and think that's something that they're doing very well. Yeah, in terms of getting their news out. Uh, it just puts them under, and the, it puts them in the crosshairs a lot, I guess. Yeah, it does. It does, and that's unfortunate because, like, 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 like we said, not every announcement can be like, "Holy shit, it's it's Link to the Past 2 or whatever," which isn't you know whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's getting it's, a little scary for Nintendo. I think it's so out of touch. It's yeah, it's frightening. And they're not even getting FIFA, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, all the like all the yeah. EA has nothing in development nothing. for them, yeah. and it, you know, I, you know, I they'll they'll have some surprises here right before E three, I'm sure, but I, I just can't see those companies coming back around. Like it's like they're trying to move forward, and they got to prove why the Wii U is not a step backwards, and yeah. um, you know, but you know, at the same time, they also released Super Metroid last week, so I, that kind of shut me up for a day. <laughs> yeah. I I downloaded it, but I I still haven't played it. I played like maybe I watched like the cinematics, and then I had to go. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that. Uh, the thing that keeps that will not get out of my crawl lately is precursor games slash Silicon Knights, whatever you want to call them. Entire handling of Shadow of the Eternals. Uh, the spiritual successor to Eternal Darkness, which on paper and like from that first announcement, we were super excited for it. But just, I don't know. There's, there's so much shady business around Silicon Knights and then that basically that entire team being at Precursor Games now and Precursor Games buying the assets of the game from Silicon Knights because Silicon Knights is getting sued and all, all that and stuff. And even, not only did they buy the assets, they bought like the equipment in the office, like computers and everything mm-hmm. like that. And they were supposed to clear those off, but I kind of doubt that they did. The only sh- little tidbit of good news is that they keep reiterating that even though Dennis Iak is involved in the game, he's not involved with how the business gets run. So maybe that'll help but but anyway the big thing last week was they so they started a crowdfunding um on their on their own website they created their own their own crowdfunding um campaign and then they also released a or kicked off their kickstarter last week so they've got two crowdfunding pieces going on at the same time and it's just it's just it's it's just coming across as bad bad as it possibly could as far as 
them begging for money and this tied to a franchise that I, you know, hold so kind of near and dear. It's just disgusting to me at this point. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of going along with that. Like, I, it seems like there's a story about them every day. Yeah. And today's was like they were backtracking on um, the X Men game and saying that they, you know. Yeah, the rumor. Well, the they rumor. Did, they, did hold, they said that they took the money that Activision was giving them for the X Men game and put it towards their other games that they can't talk about because of lawsuits or something. But yeah. the, then Dyak tried to get out in front of that today and say, no, that's we actually put our money into it. They're like, they're trying to release this positive image, but I think it's just making them worse. I, yeah, it is. It's just like somebody save them from this and save Eternal Darkness from this because this isn't going to, this is not going to turn out well or with a great game. It's, it's, uh, I just, there's nothing positive I can say about it other than, yes, I want another Eternal Darkness, but not, not, not this way, not this way. Um, <laughs> the only change of the week from chat we had this week is just uh, JPT, uh, Phil, Phil Fish, all capital letters, exclamation point. So that's hard to argue with. <laughs> Let's change Phil Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think you've been playing Fez, right? Yeah, I have. And. Um, I'm enjoying uh, it. Yeah, he's he's another one of those guys. Enjoy his work. Uh, you don't have to uh, like the man or no. the way he communicates. Uh, he did have a good point, though. That I saw him. He's been ranting on Twitter a lot lately. He's just like how his entire being is judged because of his, how he came across in that indie game uh, movie. And Because, uh, yeah, that's the snapshot everybody has. And um, he did not come across very strongly there. Well, yeah, here's an idea. Don't be an asshole and you won't peer in like an asshole on camera. <laughs> Good advice. Uh, what is your best of the week in gaming? Um, yeah, it's kind of a small best, but I'm really excited for Dust and Elysian Tale to be coming to PC and Steam in particular. Um, that game, I really enjoyed that game on Xbox, and I think everybody should play it. I'm just glad that you know a wider audience can possibly get a hold of it and, mm-hmm. and enjoy it as well. And it's please do not think about the fact that you're an animal. <laughs> it's it has nothing to do with that. We've been playing as animals for year for years. Like Sonic, same kind of deal. Um, <laughs> I don't think I ever would have thought twice about it if so many would, people had been talking I, yeah. about it. I know I didn't. And the gameplay is awesome. It's awesome. It's, the story's it's great. Really characters are great. The um, graphics are amazing. I'm glad it's getting out from um, being an exclusive. So PC sure. owners, give Dust and Leasing Tale a shot for sure. And give that, that guy some... He deserves some Skrilla. <laughs> He, yeah, he's, uh, he's a hard-working man. <laughs> he's a one-dude one studio who built that game. So, uh, My best of the week is Double Fine um, continuing to go after trying to get rights to some of the games they've made recently, namely uh, Stacking and Costume Quest, uh, because THQ actually produced those games, and in the recent THQ auctions, uh, Nordic Games picked up the rights to uh, stacking and costume quest and like they just bought this big package of games essentially and that was a part of it and double find it raise enough money to um to get those outright and they're so they're negotiating negotiating with nordic just to try to get those games back underneath uh the double find banner not he says just more for uh tim shaver said it's just more for n- nostalgia and you know the just they want to have those games are kind of their kids and they want to you know just be able to take care of them. They're not necessarily going to do more with them. It just kind of seems like the right thing to do. And, um, it's just kind of, kind of touching to see them care about their craft that much. And they yeah. always continue to exude that. And it's just, um, I'm, I'm glad to see that still continue, kind of pays off for double fine. And hopefully they can, uh, get these, get these rights sorted out and it'll, it'll work out for the best. Yeah. It's so crazy to think like what, three years ago they were, they had Brutal Legend coming out, and like basically their whole studio was riding on the fact of that game. And then now all of a sudden they just downscale to all these different pieces yeah. and have become like 
the industry darlings almost. And then we get we get more double fine games because of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Win, 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 win. And, I mean, uh, there right after Brutal Legend, um, and then they they did their little game jam thing. And they had they released a game a quarter, didn't they? Yeah, that year. Yeah. So. Uh, from chat, uh, Verdian is excited that the API for Guild Wars Two is now in testing, so third party <laughs> websites and apps can hook into the world. Um, and get real time information, um, which that was always been one of my favorite aspects of World of Warcraft. When I was heavy into that, was how I could access that game for pretty much anywhere. Like especially with apps, and not every every game um, has that option. And as, if you're if anybody if you've ever played uh, an MMO RPG, you get I mean obviously the whole focus is getting attached to your characters and being able to being able to access them through. Anything else outside the game is always useful, so that's uh, uh I understand his excitement. Um, and then JPT uh, was talking about the Civcraft Minecraft mo- mod. Um, apparently, it got so popular they had to shut down the server, but it's essentially uh, Civilization meets Minecraft, uh, which sounds like they need more hours in the day to play that because <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, I think I mentioned that, um, the the guys I work with started up their Minecraft server last week, so I've been getting back into that game a little bit. Oh, but geez. I mean, every time I play that, I'll sit down for a session, and it's still like I'll get like 15 minutes into it, and I was like, okay, are you are you playing this, or are you gonna like sit here for the entire day? Like you, you like you you have to know what you're getting into with a Minecraft session. If you're gonna get in, do something for 10 15 minutes, get out, get do that right away or you're going to be there for forever and I keep cutting myself off thankfully because we've got some other games to play but I'm still waiting for that day where I don't have the uh, self control to uh, to do that and all of a sudden the sun will set just don't stream it <laughs> oh it'll happen I'll probably do it from my, my personal channel yeah. oh come on I'd be entertaining yeah, actually what but... I should do again uh, I played that game in front of Lily as well, and she can narrate the entire thing, and it's it's probably a lot more entertaining than having me narrate it. That's yeah. Just put her on the mumble and let her go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat. Our question of the week before we get out of here, uh, we want to know your last minute new Xbox predictions. The uh, the new Xbox reveal uh, happens at 10 a.m. Pacific time Tuesday. Um, and I'll actually be hanging out in chat during during the show if you want to come uh, come chat with me and we can react to the live stream uh, together. And then Ethan and I will be podcasting about it Tuesday night. Uh, but what we want to know is uh, what's one thing you can guarantee is going to be announced and what's one thing you don't think will happen? Um, <laughs> yes, I don't think the Xbox Plus Easy Bake Oven is going to happen. So... Warm Although up brownies with heat. With the, yeah, I was gonna say the heat of the. They could the, uh, living room system. They could announce an easy bake oven like for their leftover 360s. All the overheating leftover 360s. I might make use of make use of that. Uh, do you have any predictions? Anything? What do you What do you expect yeah. tomorrow? I really think that they're gonna go for the whole living room box. Yeah. Uh, and have more. Uh, like a cable, a cable TV interaction, you know, so you can have everything go through there. Have that be your all in one. Um, did you see the? Have you seen the Aluma Room thing? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Like the I reverse holodeck. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I I don't know that that seems silly to me, but um, so I don't think they'll announce that. I don't think we're gonna get. I'd be surprised to see if we get a box. Um, I think we'll get a box tomorrow. Like. You think you? You think so? You don't think they'll hold off to it just because of the reaction that PlayStation had? I think just be no. I think well, I think that's probably driving them to sh- get a step ahead of them. Yeah. Um, but um, by showing that off, but uh, I think because they've also mentioned that E three is going to be all about the games. I think this will be just okay, all hardware focused. That makes sense. I don't think we'll get a. We won't get a price. We won't get a. Nah. I'd be surprised if we get a release date. Um, any of that other than a holiday. Um, Is that going to be always on? 
always no. connected. No. no, and they won't talk so. about it. I don't it. think so. No, they won't either. Yeah. But. They'll they'll make some mention that it'll support offline play, but they won't like focus on it. Um, um, we'll, see, like, we'll see Call of Duty and FIFA, I think. Yes, Call of Duty Ghosts, I think, is one of the confirmed reveals. Um, FIFA, I think FIFA's confirmed, too. And there's probably a Forza game, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and, do but I don't think... The, do you think the controller changes? I hope not. I don't know. Um, it's pretty much I think, perfect. Yeah, I think a little bit, like some sort of touch or something. There'll be some additional feature, too, but the it'll, it'll look... Fam- it, yeah, they, I don't think they'll go back to the Duke. But I think we'll it'll 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 something. look familiar. Yeah. Um and I don't I, I think you can guarantee they're gonna have some major hardware tie in and I think it'll be cable company related because my theory all along's been they, they seem to be shunning a lot of the indie developers lately. Like all the indie developers are touting um Sony and I and honestly it's Xbox Live Arcade's been kind of weird in the past year and a half as far as the ex- exclusive games go and they just don't be they don't seem to be hitting that as hard that I don't think I think they're trying to set it up that this is the one thing everybody will have in their living room so you're going to want to make games for it so we don't have to reach out to you like it it has this kind of so cocky they're be very yeah cocky and egotistical so like, they're going to have some big reveal that they think and I don't know if we'll buy into it that they think that we is a must have for for our living room so I'm I'm curious to see what that is um, and then I think one, oh, go ahead real quick. Uh, one thing I don't think will happen. I don't think they'll talk anything about used games either as far as DRM. Yeah. I was just going to say like, it's, it's kind of weird for me. I think there's a, and I think other people have said this before, but it seems like there's a switch into how like I'm, I know Ethan was kind of like down on the PlayStation announcement and saying, well, we already have that with my PC. Why would I want to get a PlayStation? But for me, I think I'm even less excited about what Microsoft is going to have to offer just because of what Sony has done with their PlayStation plus mm-hmm. and just the amount of games that they seem to, you know, embrace lately has me more excited on the console side. than I guess Microsoft. I just feel at this point that yeah, Sony's making a console that's more interesting to me, but I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm ready to jump in with a console right out of the gate. I, I, don't I don't think so either. Like, there's too much wait and see, and I'm too excited about where the PC's going lately, like, as far as just giving me more options. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I'll want, I'll, I'll probably get one or the other this this season just because I'm a freak that way, but I don't, I don't know, I, I don't anticipate being extremely excited about either one. It'll just be kind of, yeah, it's it. Let's try one of these out, but um, but I don't I don't feel like whichever one I purchase first is the hardcore commitment either. But right, um, I kind of feel that way too with the PC. Like I don't feel like the next Xbox and the PS4 are going to be that much different than what I already have with my PC. Whereas like I was excited for the Wii U because it was something different, and I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the ability to play screen games on that smaller screen in the living room was pretty appealing to me. Um, but don't hold this conversation against me the night before both these consoles are released, because <laughs> it might change. But as of right now, like I'm just I'm just kind of I don't know for this E3 to be generally exciting because of new consoles and stuff. It's like I don't know my my excitement level is just not there. Yep, yeah, I'll be. But I, I can't wait for the... I'm excited for the announcement. I just like, from a news standpoint, I love this shit. So news, yeah, I'm excited for E3. Standpoint. And uh, um, I, I'm, I'll am i enjoy the ride either way. So. For sure. Uh, I was taking a list at look at new releases uh, for this week. We mentioned Dustin Leasing and Tail kind of PC. Um, oh, the game everybody's been waiting for, Fast and Furious Showdown is going to be available for PC and we for everything. It looks like even Wii U. I think the bi- the big release of the week is Resident Evil Revelations across uh, platforms. Looks like PC, Xbox 360, PS3. That's the 3DS game and supposedly the the best Resident Evil of the last few years. So uh, there's also the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. Uh, it's gonna be 15 bucks on PC. 
uh, action RPG just ca- caught my attention from some gameplay footage I saw, but very Diablo-esque, but with the Van Helsing um, storyline behind it. Uh, there's another Call of War as game. No, thank you. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Yep, 3DS. So it's uh, the remake of the Wii game, which I'm actually excited about because I never played the Wii game. So. Yeah, it's supposed to be hard as hell too. So yeah, get ready. But I I will probably be checking that out. So, um, that's it for for releases. Uh, oh, I, excuse me, sorry. PSN on Vita, a game called Men's Room May Men's Room Mayhem. So I don't know what that is, but it's probably worth checking out. A it's very Japanesey sounding <laughs> gameplay video. Sounds messy. Sounds messy. Uh, yeah, my wife just said that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chat, thanks for hanging out, um, letting us know your game of the week, etc. Uh, we'll be doing this show weekly. Uh, Monday nights is uh, probably when you can expect us around nine forty-five uh, Eastern time, and then. Um, but if we can't go on Mondays, we'll go on Thursdays. So be on the lookout for Cole and myself, along with uh, random guests from the Horrible Night staff. Um, then after each show, we will be doing some multiplayer gaming, um, and we'll try to announce that on the site prior to prior to the show. Um, you will be able to subscribe to this show on iTunes starting next week, um, and then we will, as always, release the video and on on YouTube and the audio podcast on our site the day after uh, we do the live show. But we hope you can join the live show or at least uh, participate via Facebook or in chat because. Uh, we want this to be as interactive as possible, and um, looking forward to getting going with top video game podcast of the week. Hope you like the show. Let us know in uh, the comments, and we will be back with some gaming here shortly. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening. <laughs> You're so polite. <laughs>